how do we overcome this failure, fear of failure? How can we break through it? How can we motivate other people in our teams to do the same? Because that would be fantastic if we could do that, if we could break through that barrier. Well, playing poker for three years in Las Vegas taught me something very interesting about that. It taught me that in order to take risks, in order to embrace uncertainty, in order to seize opportunities, the way that we overcome this fear of failure is that we don't. We actually embrace fear of failure every single day. If we really want to climb the mountain, if we really want to make history, what we do is we embrace fear of failure and define fear of failure in a very specific way as a long-term phenomenon. Now, here's what I mean by that. As a professional poker player, I am scared of losing this next hand of poker. It is not going to be pleasant. It is not going to be nice. But I have a greater fear. And that is the fear that I will not make my rent at the end of that month. I will not be able to pay my bills at the end of this quarter. And the fear of that long-term failure, the failure to achieve my real and true objectives, that will push me through whatever short-term failures I need to go through in order to get there. When Swashira Honda talks about 1% of his work resulting from the 99% that he calls failure, he's saying he doesn't matter how much failure or investment he needs to put into something, he's only concerned with what it produces in the long term. When Michael Jordan talked about missing baskets, losing games of basketball, and accepting the responsibility to take that final shot, he's saying it would be great if they all went in, but it doesn't matter if it leads to me becoming the greatest. Thomas Edison, he's saying, it doesn't matter that I fail 2,000 times as long as I end up creating incandescent light. Dor Brunson is saying, it doesn't matter how many hands of poker I've lost, I've got $85 million in the bank. And Abraham Lincoln was saying that it would have been great if I'd won all those elective offices. It would have been great if all those businesses had succeeded. But what really matters is the way in which I changed America and the world. We're not concerned with short-term failure because our greater fear, and we don't need to call it fear, it's an inability to accept that we won't achieve our long-term goals. So here's the question that I leave you with, ladies and gentlemen. How do you define failure for yourself? How do you define it for your teams? Is it long-term? Is it the failure to achieve whatever is important to you at the end of the day, that written, stated objective and goal, or is it short-term? Is it the inevitable failures and setbacks that will occur in the process of trying to get there. Because I say this to you now, if that is how you define failure, if that is how you define failure for the people in your teams, if that is how people define failure for you, then that fear of that short-term failure will stop you from ever climbing the mountain and writing history. We use that phrase all the time. Failure is not an option. Hopefully, we understand now what we mean by that. What we really mean by that is not that failure to achieve this thing today is not an option. It's not the failure to make this idea work tomorrow is not an option. Long-term failure, that's not an option. Failure to achieve what is important to you. But if it's stretching enough, if it's demanding enough, if it is going to make people sit up and take notice of you, if failure to achieve that is not an option, then, ladies and gentlemen, short-term failures and investments, they are a necessity. Thank you very much.